there's been all the talk about how they've signed Shohei Otani and Yoshinobu Yamamoto recently, but where did the Dodgers dynasty building start? Where will it leave the organization and how did it all get accomplished? The current era of the Dodgers started in 2020 when they acquired Mookie Betts via trade from the Red Sox. A big reason behind the Dodgers acquiring Mookie Betts in the lopsided trade was that the Red Sox wanted to reduce their luxury tax payroll and the Dodgers could afford to have Mookie Betts go into an already powerful lineup. Just remember 2020 was a shortened season, but it didn't change the fact that Mookie Betts hit great that year. He batted 292 with 16 home runs. Whether it was good coaching, good team atmosphere, or just whatever it was, the Dodgers were doing great outside of Mookie Betts as well. For example, former Dodgers players Corey Seager, AJ Pollock, and Cody Bellinger had 15, 16, and 12 home runs that season respectively. When the league leader had 22 home runs on the season, I'd say that's pretty good. It was good enough to put the Dodgers in the winning seat because the Dodgers won the World Series in 2020. The next step in the Dodgers continuing their legacy was acquiring Freddie Freeman before the 2022 season on a six year, $162 million contract. So far during two seasons with the Dodgers, Freddie Freeman has been on fire at the plate. During 2022, he batted 325 with 21 home runs and had 100 RBIs. Then in 2023, he batted 331 with 29 home runs and 102 RBIs. That's pretty consistent and very valuable to the team. With the help of Betts and Freeman, the Dodgers had a good try at the World Series in 2022 and 2023, with having 111 wins in the 2022 regular season. The Dodgers had the most wins and the highest payroll in the 2022 season. Noticing a trend yet with the Dodgers? The Dodgers didn't win the World Series in 2022 and they didn't win it either in 2023 when they had 100 regular season wins. Which brings us to current day MLB. You've all heard the news, Shohei Otani has been signed for $700 million. Granted, most of it's deferred, but it's still guaranteed money. But the Dodgers also signed Yamamoto to a 12-year, $325 million contract. Then a contract extension with Tyler Glass now worth $136 million. In reality, the Dodgers are trying to buy a dynasty. But that's the game you have to play in professional sports. And it always has been. I think it's great for professional sports to have teams as dominant as the Dodgers will be in 2024. The owners of the LA Dodgers must really want to see their team win for the next few seasons, which is way better than these smaller teams acting like minor league farm systems for the bigger teams. In the big leagues you should have to compete because that's what people go to the ballpark to see. And that's what you're going to see with the Dodgers. The Dodgers are projected to win another 100 plus games in 2024, and their World Series win projection is plus 380 after all their offseason moves. To put that into non-technical terms, a 20% chance of winning it all. 